Hi, this is Miles Maria, the soldier Mary. I want to give a bit of an analysis, a commentary on the interview with Mary Cruz. In particular, I want to talk about the video in which the interviewers talk about the interview because there's a lot of stuff in there that helps bring context to the interview. So who are these two interviewers, the two journalists that managed to get this interview with Mary Cruz? They are David Cuevas and Christian Push. They are not... <laughs> I don't want to say they're not Catholics. They're kind of into the paranormal. They're into the paranormal more than they are into the rosary. That's how it came across. They seem in their own approach to jump between the view of Garabandal being a psychological hysteria, something that has been mentally imagined, something like that. But also they then jump to the other side well maybe maybe it's all to do with aliens and ufos so they 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 do conclude their discussions by saying there's mystery to garaban now because if you try and use one one explanation key to try and um deal with the whole garaban now phenomena you get so far but then it collapses so you go down the psychological route but then it collapses when you see the huge number of ecstasies and when you see the children being poked in ecstasy and not waking up not not being disturbed and other apparently people levitating some of the girls levitating they say look if you go down that route there's problems but if you go down the purely supernatural route there's also problems because there's the fact that and I'm getting to some of the content now the interview there's a fact that Mary Cruth says that Conchita was a huge influence on them. Conchita was a huge influence on her, on them, and on her in particular. In fact, they attribute to her the quote, I want to find it in my notes now, they say that, yeah, Conchita was like the virgin to us. That sounds incredible. But Conchita was like the virgin for the girls they she said mary cruz said that they were very influenced by conchita and everything she did they did so but if you go down that route of it being a hysteria or a game of children it gets you so far sorry if you go down the route of being supernatural then you've got to explain the fact that conchita was in control of it and that she was a key player in it um so there's so there's problem, but also the idea of it being a fraud, you can go down that route, but then you come up against the fact that Mary Cruz says that it was the happiest time of her life, and you can imagine if you were living this fraud, you would kind of be worried about it. And I know I would be if I was faking this whole thing. I would be forever worried, anxious that the whole thing's going to be blown up. Um, so. So anyway, so those are the two individuals that do the interview and they managed to get in contact with her, it seems, by going to Garabandal and speaking to some of the families there, some of the, the visitors there and asking about and gradually getting the contact details. They want to talk to a visionary, a visionary, and by process of elimination, they decide it has to be Mary Cruz, because she's the one that lives in Spain. She's the one that they can actually see in person. Um, and so they decide she's going to be the one it's going to be. They managed to get her phone number. And to be to begin with, she doesn't really want to have anything to do with it. But this guy, uh, David, apparently is really good with people. And he's, you know, he's a really friendly guy, a nice guy to meet. And has got away with people. And he started talking to her about family matters about her life showed an interest in her as a person and befriended her i guess and eventually after phoning her and gradually getting more uh of her trust she agrees to meet them in her own town um and it works out that spain is in a bit of a lockdown at that moment so the whole thing is delayed until 
the regions the regions in Spain all had different rules and you weren't allowed to necessarily travel between them during the height of the pandemic. And so they have to wait until the restrictions are down. And then they phone Mary Cruyff and they say, oh, yeah, we're kind of coming through the area. Could we pop by and do this interview of you? I think they say from my memory that they weren't actually that near to her, but it was they wanted to be casual. And she said, OK, yeah. And they meet her in the town center and they actually spend the interview walking around they're doing the paseo walking around the town in the evening with one of them holding a recording device they say that she was very sincere very sincere she seemed really honest very frank about the fact that she can't really remember She can't really, she remembers the circumstances of the apparitions. She remembers the the other people that were visiting the village. She remembers her mother and her mother's health. But she doesn't remember Our Lady, what she looked like, what she said, the angel, what he said. She remembers what she said to other people about this much later. But she doesn't, it's like there's a... Like there's a hole in her memory there. Now the interviewers later on suggest, well, maybe that's the easiest way for her to say it didn't happen. You know, if you say, oh, I don't remember it, I don't remember it is a bit like saying is maybe an easier way of putting it never happened. That's why I don't remember it, because I never saw her. That's why I don't remember it. But Mary Cruyff never goes that far. And they actually, at one point, they try and try and get to squeeze out of her whether she thought it might have been an alien or something. But she says, no, no, it wasn't an alien. It wasn't UFOs. Um, because that's something that interests them quite a bit from some of their other other videos. So they... Um, in also in the the interview, they talk about the idea of the priest pressurizing them, which was which was really interesting because you get a quite a bit in that video, uh, Dios Garabandal so Dios lo sabe. The idea that that the priests are and the ecclesiastical authorities are really pressurizing Conchita, the girls, to deny the apparitions. Mary Cruyff says no. They just wanted to interview us. They weren't pressurizing us. There's this statement, isn't there, that Conchita is told you will be refused Holy Communion or you'll be excommunicated if you do not deny the apparitions. Mary Cruyff says, no, that, you know, that wasn't the case. They were fair. They were just being prudent, which is another very different take on the Garabandal history. The interviewers say that there's very little objective stuff written about Garabandal. And I've got to agree on that. Garabandal history is written by people that travelled halfway across the world to get to Garabandal, Americans often, in order to get to Garabandal, spending loads of money to get there. And then they write what they see, maybe what they what they want to see. It's not written by people that... Like, like, remember the vision of the sun at Fatima, and we have that account written by that Freemasonic journalist who died, died as far as I remember, outside of the church. He didn't convert or anything, but he objectively wrote down what the miracle of the sun looked like and what happened. I know it's maybe a false, um, false to simply say oh because someone's traveled all the way across the world and they're a devout catholic and they're really enthusiastic for apparitions and garabandal that we cannot trust their testimony no that's not fair but at the same time if we want to make a full picture of garabandal we need a variety of perspectives and the person that takes the time their time to write a book about garabandal is normally someone that thinks something really amazing happened there. It's not someone that went there and maybe one day saw the children faking an ecstasy or saw the children tripping up on the stones as they were walking backwards. Which again, in in this video, in this interview rather, Mary Cruyff says there was nothing supernatural about that. That was just us walking through the village um, and we were familiar with the streets. I haven't mentioned this before, but when I was in Garabandal uh, on the two occasions I was there, I did try walking backwards 
quickly down the Kayecha. And it was quite possible. It was quite possible. It was easier than you might think to walk backwards on the Kayecha. And I was doing it just on my own. I wasn't doing it with someone holding my arm and I wasn't familiar with the contours of the pathway. So you maybe, you know, that's really interesting that she says, don't pay attention to that walking backwards stuff. There's nothing miraculous about that. But weren't they meant to be seeing Our Lady at that moment? Isn't that why their heads were backwards? You know, the, the interview does raise mysteries it certainly does so what else can i say about the interview commenting on the interview yeah i think that we could say that the interviewers themselves they're not they're not true believers in in the apparitions as something belonging to our lady and they in some situations don't know all the facts of the apparitions at Garabandown, the purported apparitions. You'll notice in the article, they highlight, they put in bold print a section where Mary Cuth talks about how when others um, poked the other children, um, I saw that they didn't flinch. And the guys, the interviewers are like, wow, oh, weren't you? They don't say it to her at the time, so it seems. But they're like to each other, wow, how is it that she wasn't in the vision, the ecstasy, when the others were in the ecstasy? Aren't they all meant to be in ecstasy together? That shows ignorance about the apparitions, of purported apparitions, because actually one of the characteristic features is they jump in and out of ecstasy. I thought that was a really embarrassing um, error on their behalf that they don't, they didn't appreciate that actually was pretty common for two girls to have a, be having the vision and one to be back in normality. And so entirely able to appreciate that one of them has been poked or pinched or, or, you know, stabbed or something. Um, so I don't know if there's any more I can, I want to say one more thing about the fact that Mary Cruyff hasn't seen Conchita since her wedding. You know, that's that's pretty interesting. 50 years without seeing Conchita again. It's clear that she saw has seen Jacinta again. That seemed to be implied because they both go to Garabandao every summer or, or, or Jacinta goes very frequently. They have seen each other, but she hasn't seen Conchita and she doesn't know anything about her you know that is for me that that's really something that that they haven't seen each other they don't know anything about each other i'll conclude by saying that for the interviewers the thing they really struggle with is the idea that she could possibly be unable to remember the idea of her being unable to remember they see that as a really um serious failing in, in a serious a serious point against the idea of them being true apparitions. They don't consider the argument, the counter argument, the Garabandalistas will say that this forgetfulness is of supernatural origin, that it isn't a purely natural or a, oh, the apparitions didn't happen, therefore I don't remember them. Actually, no, it was a supernatural haze, a fog which has covered her memory so she, the fact she doesn't remember and that she lives in this kind of haze of remembering having spoken about this remembering having described this to others and having some kind of imagine of what happened imaginary vision of what happened they don't they don't consider that point but for me i can take that i can take the idea that maybe it was a supernatural thing that has allowed her to forget the apparitions and the content of them because essentially God wants her to walk by faith like any one of us. He doesn't want her going through life absorbed in the apparition, but he wants her to merit and to merit uh, by cooperating with his grace from his position of faith, a position of a wayfarer who isn't in heaven, who doesn't have the beatific vision, who isn't in the company of Our Lady the whole time, who doesn't have that prop that's part of the purgation in the interior life, losing those props of visions, of losing a prop of maybe uh, intellectual certainty for a certain period of time. That's a part of someone growing in holiness. The fact that they don't have much, these two guys, they didn't have much uh, theology about them. 
means that they probably weren't able to consider this point of view. Anyway, it was a really worthwhile video that they made describing the interview. So they actually said there was another part coming. There was going to be a second part coming. It hasn't come out yet, and it's a few months since the first one. Maybe, maybe it was that El Mundo wasn't willing to publish a second version, second, second part, second instalment in the series. Maybe that was it. Maybe they're saving it for an, an, a book, a book length uh, event, um, interview, book length. Um, account of the interview anyway I hope this has helped you understand the interviews a little bit more and it's allowed me to share some of my thoughts on the interviews let me know what you think in the comments below may almighty God bless you may our lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen